hand lotion with the beforehand extra and Vitalis for well-groomed hair bring you Duffy's Tavern, starring Archie himself, Ed Gardner. <laughs> no man is well-dressed unless his hair is well-groomed. So take the tip. Try the way successful men in both sports and business keep their hair looking its very best. It's Vitalis and the 60-second workout. See how the Vitalis workout helps your hair, helps stimulate your scalp. See how it prevents dryness, routes loose dandruff, and helps check excessive falling hair. And see how Vitalis keeps your hair handsome and healthy looking with never a trace of a greasy patent leather shine. For there's not a single drop of mineral oil in Vitalis. So try Vitalis and the 60-second workout. You'll like it. And you'll like what it does for the looks of your hair. Hello, Duffy's Tavern. Where do you late to eat meat to eat? Archie the Magic Stick. <laughs> right away. <laughs> Duffy ain't here. Oh, hello, Duffy. <clears throat> Look, I just got quite a compliment. Yeah, the uh, glass eater from the circus uh, was in. He says our blue plate special lunch was delicious. <laughs> yeah, he left the luncheon at the plate. <laughs> well, Duffy, in his business, you know, he can't take chances with his stomach. Uh, <clears throat> another thing, the inspector from uh, Weights and Measures was in, you know, and complained about the size of our whiskey jiggers. Yeah, he says they was too small, so <laughs> I tricked him. I gave him a drink of our bar rye and... Then he complained the jiggers was too big. <laughs> well, look, Duffy, I'm going down to the bank to may make a deposit. Well, yeah, nothing like having a little dough put aside. I, you know, I quit smoking, stopped going to movies, and quit buying fancy clothes, been keeping away from dames. Yeah, for the first time, I'm really enjoying life. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, <clears throat> can I have an hour off to go to the bank? I can't. Now, look, Duffy... You know, tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day, and uh, I've been meaning to ask you, uh, did St. Patrick chase you out of Ireland? Ah, <laughs> huh? go soak your head. Hey, Miss Archie, did I hear you say you was taking an hour off? Why not? It's my turn. How do you figure? You had an hour off last year. <laughs> Besides, it's uh, rather urgent, you know. I have an important appointment with my bank. I'm uh, making a deposit. How much... Ten bucks. <laughs> and you know what? Uh, ten bucks ain't hay. Oh, nowadays, it ain't even money. <laughs> All right. Which, which bank are you going to? Well, that's my big problem, uh, finding a bank that I can trust. Mm, that's, that's a switch. Up till now, your big problem was finding a bank that would trust you. <laughs> Uh, how come you're getting so thrifty all of a sudden? Well, I think a guy should look out for his future, you know? You never can tell when disaster is liable to strike. Mm, like what? Oh, sickness, accident, marriage. <laughs> now, take you, uh, how much do you make a week? Including tips? Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> mm -hmm. And out of that, how much do you save? Practically nothing. But I'm going to be different. No more throwing dough away, like on dames. You know, look what it cost me to go out last Saturday night. You mean with Dollar Snapper? Yeah. Joe's diner wasn't good enough for it. She has to go to one of them high-class places where there's dining and dancing. Mm, cost you plenty, huh? You know how them jukeboxes eat up nickels. <laughs> Another thing I'm going to cut down on is me rent. Why do I need a six-room apartment? How much does it cost you? Plenty. Nine bucks a month. <laughs> that much? Well, I rented it when the apartments were scarce and I got stuck with a lease. <laughs> now, sir, from now on, I'm going to be known as Thrifty Archie. I'm going to put a little something aside, you know? Eddie, we can all take a lesson from the squirrels, you know? All year round, they're busy storing up nuts. Uh, oh, huh? <laughs> Finnegan? Uh, how's things, George? Finnegan, you see before you a new Archie. Oh, did you get a good trade-in on the old one? <laughs> Finnegan, what I mean is I'm trying to figure out how to cut down the cost of living. Well, that's simple. Oh, yeah? How do I do it? Drop dead. <laughs> 
I'm afraid your method is a little too roundabout. <clears throat> well, there's two sides to that question. What do you mean? I'm a little off-center. <laughs> you stand there, too, don't you? Yes, you might have gotten a laugh if I'd read the right line there, too. <laughs> that I know. Want to try it again? Yeah, well, there's two sides to that question. Where do you stand? <laughs> I am a little off center. <laughs> that I know. <laughs> but uh, take your case, for instance, yeah. Finnegan. Uh, do you manage to save any money? Oh, certainly. For instance, every time we weigh ourselves, me and me kid brother save a penny. How? We both get on the scale at the same time. <laughs> you both can. Then how can you tell what each one weighs? Simple. We divide by two. <laughs> And that don't make no sense. One of you has to weigh more than the other. What's the difference, Arch? It's all in the family. <laughs> He's a little off center. <clears throat> Look, uh, after you save these pennies, what do you do with them? Oh, dear. I go to Coney Island and have a good time. Yeah, and you never think of saving anything for a rainy day, though, huh? Who wants to go to Coney Island on a rainy day? <laughs> Finnegan, I'm beginning to conclude that you don't know nothing about economics. Well, I could have told you that. <laughs> well, uh, would you like me to explain the economic system to you? Is there any way I can get out of it? <laughs> no. Then please do. Okay. We'll start with money. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, take the dollar, or as it is known today, the half dollar. <laughs> now... If you put it in a bank, they pay you 1% interest. But how can they make money that way? Well, they lend it back, the end charge you 6%. <laughs> See, that is, of course, unless you're very poor. If you're poor, the bank don't charge you the 6%. How come? They don't lend you the money in the first place. <laughs> Does that answer your question? Uh, uh, I think so, except for one minor point. What's that? What's the economic system? <laughs> I think I'm wasting my time. Look, oh, Eddie, God. keep an eye on the joint while I get down to the bank, will you? Hey, can I go along with you? What do you want to go to the bank for? I'd just like to stand there and drool. <laughs> well, here we are, Eddie, the 3rd Avenue Bank and Trust Company. Yeah. Look what it say on the window. Asset, $36 million. Little did I know that in a few minutes they'll have to add ten bucks to that sign. I uh, know. Leave us find the president's office. There it is right there. See that? See there? J. B. McIntosh, president. J. B. McIntosh. Think I should uh, just call him J. B. Why not? He'll probably call you by your initial. You know how it is with them presidents. <laughs> Leave us go in. Uh, Mr. McIntosh? Uh, yes? Uh, sir, uh, I am a potential depositor. D uh, do you mind if I ask a few questions? Not at all. Well, uh, nothing personal, but uh, can you prove to me that your brank ain't crooked? I uh, beg your pardon? Come, come, McIntosh. You know what I'm driving at. Do you maintain a fiduciary balance uh, to offset diminishing debentures on the fiscal? I, I don't understand. Uh, what he want to know is, if he put it in, do he get it out? <laughs> Thank you, Eddie. What's your answer to that one, McIntosh? Young man, you can take your money out at any time unless you put it in our Christmas club. Oh, what happens then? Then the money can't be taken out till next December. Can't, huh? Uh, suppose there are redundant circumstances. <laughs> Sorry, but we're very strict. You see, some of our depositors are weak and spineless and haven't enough character to resist temptation. Mr. Archer, give the man the money. <laughs> uh, what amount did you plan to deposit, young man? Well, I was uh, planning something in the general neighborhood of ten bucks. <laughs> ten bucks? Yes. Oh, goody! Now we can build that annex! Yeah. <laughs>
Well, Finnegan, we're back from the bank. Uh, and... Don't bother me, Arch. I'm busy taking care of a customer. Oh, a customer. Good. What's he buying? Nothing. He's selling me a watch. <laughs> oh, let me see that. Hey, let me look at that watch. Hey, pretty good. What do you want for it, stranger? Ten bucks. You got a deal. Uh, will you trust me till Christmas? <laughs> hey, what's your offer, bud? Me? Uh, uh, two bucks. Cash. Brother, you bought yourself a watch. <laughs> so long, fellas. Finnegan, how can you be such a jerk letting that guy sell you such a crummy watch? I'll bet it don't even run. Well, if it don't, the laugh's on him. How come? I can't tell time. <laughs> Some people just never learn. Hello, Arch. Oh, hello, Joe. Hey, nice watch you got there, Finnegan. Would you like to sell it? Oh, good. Maybe. Uh, how much? Well, I want five, but I'll take ten. <laughs> you, you want five, but you'll take ten, huh? What do you say we split the difference? Okay, it's a deal. Three bucks. <laughs> Hey, hey, that's pretty good, huh? I paid two and I get three. Yeah, Joe, what are you going to do with the watch? Uh, give it to my girl. A cheap watch like that? Arch, it's not the watch, it's the sentiment. Besides, a watch like that on my girl's wrist will get everyone to notice her hands. You can say that again. Well, naturally, Arch. <laughs> After all, she has lovely hands. Truché, you know. I know. <laughs> And there's nothing like Truché to care for hands because Truché is the before hand lotion. Something really different in hand lotions. You can use it before you get to work, before you do dishes, before you put your hands in water. And Truché is so effective that it will guard your hands even in that hot, soapy water. But you can also use Truché as you use ordinary hand lotions. Anytime your hands need a creamy, softening lotion. So get Truché and get an all-around hand lotion that gives you beforehand protection. Something no ordinary lotion gives you. Get Truché, the beforehand lotion, and get softer, lovelier hands. Uh, hey, Art. Yeah? If you buy a watch for two bucks and you sell it for three bucks, uh, how much do you make? Uh, fifty percent. Mm. How much do they pay you in the bank? One percent. Gee, Arch, I wish I had your brains. Don't be sarcastic. At least in the bank, I know the money is safe. That is, I think it is. Uh, Eddie. Uh, yeah? I'm just thinking, when we was down to the bank, uh, did you notice that cashier? What about him? You notice he always kept his hat on? <laughs> and that president, uh, that Macintosh, I wonder... Give me that phone. Hello? Uh, Third Avenue Bank and Trust Company? Look, would you kindly peek into Mr. McIntosh's office and see if he's still there? <laughs> he is? Okay, thank you. Uh, well, that's that. Hey, Miss Arthur, ain't that Max the Bookie over there? Max the Bookie? Uh, the guy from the racetrack? Oh, yeah, yeah. I wonder if he's heard I got money. Arch... Sweet Sue in the third race. He heard. <laughs> uh, look, Max, I've quit betting the horses. I don't want no more of them phony tips. Phony? You heard me. That last horse you give me. When a race starts, he has to run in the wrong direction. Then when he gets halfway around the track, he faints. <laughs> well, it was the shock, Arch. It was the first time he'd ever seen other horses face to face. <laughs> Oh, yeah? Well, what about that other short thing? The one where you told me the jockey was your own brother. The horse was full of Benzedrine. The judges was all fixed. How come I lost on that one? Well, Arch, can I help it if somebody pulls something crooked? <laughs> Look, Max, you're wasting your time. I'm through betting on horses. I got me money safely tucked away in the bank. You put it in the bank? Yeah. What odds did they give you? <laughs> They didn't give me no odds. You mean they only give you even money? What is the world coming to? Look, Max, get out of here, will you? You're wasting oh. your time. Okay. Uh, maybe some of your pals would like to make a few bucks, huh? Uh, how about you, bud? Not me. Last horse I bet on, he came in so late at night he had to tiptoe into the stable. <laughs> Well, okay, gents. Just remember what I told you. Sweet Sue in the third. 
Are you kidding, sweet Sue? He couldn't run his way out of a paper bag. Well, then, uh, what about Blue Boy in the fourth? Blue Boy, strictly a nag. Okay. Uh, how about this one in the sixth? A horse called Money in the Bank. Max, I'm not gonna... <laughs> Money in the Bank. The arch, it might be a hunch. Yeah, Max, uh, are you sure this is a good tip? Oh, I figured it out according to my system. What system? Well, don't you remember? Who gave you Valdina Mall in the Gold Cup? You did. And who gave you Speed King in the Preakness? You did. Who gave you Lady Luck in the Kentucky Derby? You did, but so what? All them horses lost. <laughs> well, Arch, no system is perfect. <laughs> hey, look, uh, this horse, this money in the bank. Yeah? Uh, what's the odds on him? Four to one. And, brother, you can put your shirt right on his nose. Won't that interfere with his breathing? <laughs> Wait a minute, Max. Huh? You're a bookie. If this horse is such a hot tip, how come you're willing to bet against yourself? I'm the friendly type. Oh. <laughs> you see, you guys are all pals of mine. I'd like to make you happy. Well, that's good enough for me. I'll bet three bucks on him. Okay, you want to bet him to win? What do you think, to lose? <laughs> Look, again, you're making a big mistake, I'm telling you. Oh, Yeah. Like I did with the watch, eh? Okay. Play, Gypsy. Dance while you may. Turn the radio on, Eddie, and uh, leave us see what happens. Okay. Wait a minute. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And now the horses are rounding the first turn. It's oh. Skyrocket out in front, followed by Sea Breeze, Lady Pilot, and Money in the Bank. Uh, come on, Money in the Bank. As J.P. Barnum says, there's one born every minute. <laughs> now they're in the straightaway. It's Skyrocket, Sea Breeze, and Money in the Bank moving up in a third position. To quote Benjamin Franklin, uh, a penny saved is a penny earned. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Money in the Bank! And now it's neck and neck, Skyrocket and Money in the Bank. Benjamin Franklin felt that a modest return on a modest investment was always necessary. <laughs> And here comes Money in the Bank. It's Money in the Bank by one length. Benjamin Franklin. <clears throat> and now it's Money in the Bank by two lengths. A lot of boy, Money in the Bank. Uh, Benjamin Franklin. Uh, the... And Money in the Bank is the winner. Oh, boy, the winner. Yeah, and four to one. Uh, did you hear that, Mr. Archer? That's stinking Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> Uh, look, I, I think I'll call up my mother and tell her the good news. You're going to spend a nickel to call your mother? Oh, I made 12 bucks. See? Easy come, easy go. <laughs> These horse players is all alike. Go ahead, throw away your nickel. Hmm. No answer. Uh, someday you'll listen to your old Uncle Archie. Yeah. I guess you better hang up. <laughs> oh, boy! Look, look, a hat full of nickels. Oh, boy. What was you saying, old Uncle Archie? <laughs> okay, scoff me, but I still say me money's gonna stay in the bank. <clears throat> Archie, bonsoir, mon chéri. Well, Renny, I ain't seen you in a long time. Did you miss me, Archie? Yeah, now that I see you, I... Realize how much of you I've missed. <laughs> you lost a little weight, didn't you? Yes. I've been taking reducing pills. Reducing pills, eh? Wonderful how them little pills know just what to leave alone. <laughs> Renny, uh, ain't this kind of a surprise visit, though? Uh... Well, I was thinking about you, and I felt a little lonesome. Oh, I thought maybe you heard I got money in the bank. <laughs> you have money in the bank? Yes, in a Christmas fund. Oh. Yes, you see, a friend of mine, uh, Mr. McIntosh, the president of the bank, uh, Mr. McIntosh says I gotta keep it there. You uh... mean you can't take the money out till Christmas? Uh, well, Mr. McIntosh says Archie, that... Archie, 
why wait till December when it could be Christmas tonight? <laughs> Rennie, you mean... Yes, we could dance together. And you could hold me real close in your arms. But, uh, Mr. McIntyre says the <laughs> bank has a rule. That then the... later on in the evening, we could go someplace where we could be all alone. Just the two of us. <laughs> Hello, McIntyre. Merry Christmas. <laughs> McIntosh, uh, this is Archie. I got him my... Hello? Hmm. I think I'd better go down there in person. Uh, Rennie, please, uh, wait here, though, in the meantime, will you? And, 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 and don't lose the mood. <laughs> but, Mr. Archie, uh, would Benjamin Franklin approve of you spending your money this way? Eddie, Benjamin Franklin was a much older man than I am. <laughs> Gee, the answer is no. But, Mr. McIntosh, you're a banker. You got a heart, ain't you? Who, me? <laughs> Look, Mr. McIntosh, <clears throat> I'd like you to meet me brother. Uh, hello. Uh, this is your brother? Well, things is tough all over. <clears throat> That's why I need the money, sir. You see, me brother here has to have a uh, delicate brain operation. A uh, brain operation? Yes, they've got to remove it. <laughs> yeah, the doctor says it's cluttering up his thoughts. <laughs> and, and it ain't only the operation, uh, Mr. McIntosh. He's got other troubles. His wife just come back from Chicago with a little bundle in her arms. The uh, poor dame's got to do her own laundry. <laughs> you had enough, McIntosh? <clears throat> Archie, the answer is no. Mr. McIntosh, take another look at me, brother here. How would you like me to go around telling people he's a director of this bank? Uh, yeah. Gentlemen, I know when I'm licked. Here's the ten dollars. <laughs> Looks like we're all set. You have the money? Yep. Now, uh, where do we start tonight? Uh, you name it, honey. Nah, you name it. Nah, you name it. The stock club. Okay, I'll name it. <laughs> Look, why don't we just go to Joe's Diner? Joe's Diner? But, Archie, it's so cold there. I think I'd be much warmer at the stock club. Excuse me a minute. Eddie, the dame wants to go to the store club. So what? I only got ten bucks. I got to get some more money. Arch, stumble bum in the seven. <laughs> Max, are you still here? Uh, Archie... Uh, just a minute, Ronnie. <clears throat> Max, this stumble bum, is it a good horse? Arch, I would bet him if he was running against my own mother. <laughs> yeah? Okay, here's the ten bucks. Put it on his nose. Eddie, look in the racing form and uh, see what it says about the seventh race. Seventh race. Now, let me see. <clears throat> see, see. Fly away should win easily. Mm -hmm. uh, paper boy will be right there at the finish. Mm -hmm. Buzz bomb the one to beat. Mm -hmm. Red basket has won four in a row. Mm -hmm. Stumble bum. Yes. Very fond of apples. <laughs> Is that all? <clears throat> no, I say here, yeah, in his last race, Stumble Bum finished in the money. Uh, finished in the money, huh? Yeah, he jumped the rail and crashed into the two-dollar window. <laughs> uh, just a minute, Ronnie. I got a horse running in the next race. I got to listen to it on the radio. Huh? Yes, folks, it's the seventh race, and the horses are at the starting gate. All except Stumble Bum. He's having a hard time getting there. The walk from the paddock seems to have tired him out. Max, I think I should have bet on your mother. Well, now the horses are all lined up. Stumblebum is leaning against the starting gate. He's leaning? Well, he's saving his energy. Oh. There's quite a crowd out here at the track today, and... Wait a minute. 
What's that? There must be a storm coming up. Sounds like thunder. No. No, I'm wrong. It's just Stumblebum snoring. <laughs> Stumblebum seems to be having a little trouble with his legs. He's down on one knee. Max. Uh, uh, well, you see, he's just going into a crouch for a good start. Oh. Well, we're all ready to go, folks. And they're off. It's Fly Away, Paperboy, Buzz Bomb, Bread Basket, and Stumblebum is coming up fast. You hear that? He's coming up fast. Yes, sir. Stumblebum gets up off his knees and breaks into a fast dog truck. He's a slow starter. Oh, oh. And now at the quarter pole, it's Fly Away, Paperboy, Buzz Bomb, and Bread Basket. And Stumblebum is bringing up the rear. I had to bet him on his nose. <laughs> Stumblebum, get going, will you? Coming into the far turn, it's still fly away. Paper boy, buzz bomb, and bread basket. Stumblebum, where are you? He probably stopped to ask directions. <laughs> and now, as they cross the finish line, it's fly away, and then paper boy, and buzz bomb, and bread basket. What a race this was, folks. A lovely day and a record attendance. And for you folks who are leaving the track and driving home, the officials ask you to please drive carefully. And stumble bump. <laughs> and now, a word about tomorrow's races. Archie. Yeah? What about our dinner date? Well, Renny, as I told you, you know, I was going to take you to the store club and have champagne and caviar and uh, crepe Suzettes and quail. And stumble bump. <laughs> Eddie, please. But unfortunately, <clears throat> I'm broke. So how about a little dinner here at the tavern, huh? Archie, I just remembered. I have another appointment. Wait a minute, honey. Uh, uh, just a minute. I'll, I'll get the dough. Finnegan, yeah. look, you, you still got the 12 bucks you won? Yeah. You still got the hat full of nickels? But sure. Well, let me have it, quick. Well, what do you need it for? You got money in the bank. <laughs> oh, Monsieur Finnegan. Yeah? How would you like to take me to the stock club? Can we get by on 12 bucks? I think so. Good night, Archie. Uh, sleep time. <laughs> that Finnegan, what a joke. You see, Eddie? That's the way it is with them horse players. Once a sucker, always a sucker. <laughs> Men, the quickest way to discover something better is to try it. That's why I want you to try Ben X Brushless Shave Cream. Ben X is the new wonder shave with a sensational beard softening formula that has brought better shaving to thousands of men. Ben X Brushless leaves your face feeling extra smooth and comfortable. And Ben X doesn't clog your razor or drain either. But don't take our word for it. Just try Ben X yourself. Get a tube at your nearest drug counter. Or we'll send you a trial tube free. Write your name and address on a postcard and mail to Ben X. B E N E X. Empire State Building, New York 1, New York. Remember, buy Ben X Brushless. Or try it free by writing Ben X, Empire State Building, New York. Hurry, offer limited. It's time now to leave Duffy's Tavern for this evening, but let's meet here again at the same time next Wednesday. Duffy's Tavern is brought to you by Vitalis for well-groomed hair and True Shea, the hand lotion with the beforehand extra. Each Wednesday, Bristol Myers brings you Duffy's Tavern and Mr. District Attorney, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is radio's Mr. District Attorney, friends, inviting you to hear one of the most human and gripping stories we've ever presented. It's the case of Send the Homeless on Mr. District Attorney, which follows immediately on NBC.